My brakes are back here. What the heck? We went a little different, threw a carburetor on top. A carburetor <laughs> on an LS? We're out here in Madera County. What's up, Arshia? Hey, guys. Hey, what's up? You're gonna introduce me or? <laughs> Well, you guys, everybody already knows this guy. Um, you know what the people want? We're up want? in my hood. We're in my hood, which is uh, Central California. Actually, technically, 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 this is Northern California, right on the center line. So, is it okay to start saying like "hella" and stuff yes, like that? Yes, hundred percent. Are dudes allowed? Can I say "dude"? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Well, I don't think you guys want me to say "dude" anymore, anyways. <laughs> So we're actually with the homie Brad right now. We're gonna go check out his truck. Him and his lady moved out here. Have an awesome view as you can see behind us. He has a shop, he has a nice setup. Let's go check it out. What's up, buddy? What's Thanks for letting us cruise out, my friend. How was the drive? It was epic, man. We're here for this bad boy. You built this thing pretty much from the ground up. Yeah, so I bought this truck back in 2010 when I graduated high school. So this is my first vehicle I've ever owned personally myself. Oh dang, dude. So this is a, a personal build. Yeah, so it was the 2000 with the round lights. I adjusted all to the cat eye because I kind of like that look a little better. And it also matches my tow rig too. So. Oh, well, there you go. They, they got a match, bro. Yeah. They got a match. This is your high school truck. You started building it yourself, so did you learn how to fab on this thing, or did you already know how to fab? Uh, no, everything was learned, you know, kind of by myself and the help of, you know, buddies. When I started this truck, I lived down in L.A. County, in Long Beach. My cousin was the one that really got me into it. We went hunting in his, in his old blazer, and it was just a beat-the-crap blazer, and we just had a good time in it. And just He's the one that got me into it. He's the one that helped me fab most of this truck. Since we moved up here, it's just been kind of slowly going at it and now we're at to where we're at now What kind of front clip is that? Uh, this is a advanced fiber loops. Yeah, Hot potato. Oh. Let's just kind of start with the top and work our way down. All right, so uh, we got a 6.0 LS and an LP4. One of my buddies down in Visalia, he, uh, he built the motor for me. And we went a little different, threw a carburetor on top. And uh, Wait, hold on. A what? What? Yeah. <laughs> a carburetor on an LS? Yeah. Um, so back when this motor was built, Holly was just coming out with all their wiring harness stuff and it was a little too expensive for my budget. So the carburetor was just the easy way to go. It's plug and play with a little MSD ignition system and just power ground and ignition and, and, the, and it ran. Okay, cool. So six liter LQ? LQ4. LQ4. Yeah, just carbureted. Yep, with a cam, some heads, and that's it. You gotta like, yeah, you gotta like pump the gas pedal five times before you start yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I do, I do have the Switch Pros in the system, so I do, I can remote start this from my phone. Nice. So it's pretty cool to have a carburetor that does remote start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, okay. So specs on the motor, we got that. Uh, is it built at all or anything? Or yeah, it's got, it's got mild built, you know, cam. Uh, it's putting 305 at the wheels with 39s, so it's not. Not, not bad. Too bad. If we can maybe flash back to before, this truck had a Missoula kit, A arms. Um, had a stock rack in it, which I broke, I don't know, nine of them last year. So we decided to go to the I beam suspension, uh, change it up, get a little bit more travel, a little bit more beef out of it. Chris Missoula, he makes a great kit, and I, I 
never outdrove the kit itself. The kit worked absolutely flawless, but I broke racks left and right, left and right. And to upgrade the steering was to do a whole swing set steering. And if I'm gonna go that far into it, changing the whole suspension was just a little bit easier to do. Sock racks on the Chevys were just not really good. And plus you're putting 39 inch tires on them. It's 135 pounds, I believe, with the wheel. So yeah. that's, yeah, a, lot that's of, a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. And yeah, and that rack's not designed or no, it's, it's a cast. engineered to handle that kind of weight and all yeah, that kind of it's stuff. It's a cast rack and I, I, O'Reilly's was nice enough to uh, warranty every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Suckers! <laughs> <Just kidding>. I mean... <laughs> oh, 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 O'Reilly! Yeah, so obviously with the, the I-beams we're able to get much bigger shocks in here. So we got 3.0 16 inch coilover and then the King Kong 4.0 bypasses. Dude, look how big uh, those are. From, King, so the whole front end we're pulling we're strapped at 25 inches the only thing that stayed from the a-arms was this tube here it came in through the firewall and then came down to the frame here so that was the only tube that stayed okay. um, the shocks mounted further in with the a-arms around this area and so all that got cut out and all these tubes here got added the new shock mounts the new uh, crossover here was all added and then we went a little different we're running two power steering pumps both from Howe, and then a big Saginaw trophy truck box, and then it's got the long uh, sector, uh, sector shaft on that, which helps. So that's this big shaft right here coming off the pitman arm? No, so this, this shaft oh, here, this, uh, right okay. here, so as all the force hits there, it's able to twist a little bit, kind of like a like an axle would, you know, mm. got a little bit of twist to it, so it uh, kind of helps with the strength of the, the box. Right on. And then you have a ram assist. I see your ram, ram assist yeah, over so here. Yeah, we got a ram assist, um, which is a howl ram as well. That um, little guy back in there. So we've gotten down to the steering here. So then now we have these gnarly big, big old beamers here. Yeah, so these, um, these were made by uh, one of our buddies out here in Fresno. His name is Mitch. So he built these. We got equal length beams with uh, center mount radius arms. So the radius arms actually meant mount to the transmission cross member got you and this is a this is the same the similar geometry as the uh, the psychotic fab yeah so we went back and forth with roy and that's how kind of how we got this design here and how mitch got it all fabbed up and made so with that psychotic tender there's actually a lot of parts on this truck that are from that truck yeah these things are gnarly how about these uh how about these spindles or these uprights here so uh, is there anything special about those uh, and those were also made by Mitch. I mean, he made the whole kit. So I'm able to adjust the camber angle with just the time here. I can, you know, loosen it, camber yeah, it's out. Yeah, got a big old uniball on the bottom there. Yeah. So it's a single bolt. So it's like a 12 inch bolt that goes all the way through both of those. Wow. I'm also running four piston wheel wood brakes with camber two and a half inch hubs. Kind of a big boy package. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Trophy truck stuff. Nice little plug there, built to destroy. Yeah. But right on, man. Okay, cool. So there's the whole front, right? And then you have the you have a nice front clip piece. Do any of these headlights work or anything? Yeah, the headlights all work. Um, so my buddies over at Wide Open Customs, they helped me out when I was in a rough spot. Um, when I was moving up from LA to up here, I didn't have a place for the truck. So they were more than willing to help me out. They brought the truck into their shop, which is in Victorville. And I was like, hey man, if there's anything you can do, to work on the truck while it's there while yeah. it's there we can do it so they built the radiator support here this whole headlight bracket that's actually a really nice headlight bracket dude. yeah it is it's super clean yeah. and it's kind of overlooked it like you know you got your tabs right here for these guys you got your three pods what light what lights are you running so these are the og uh the carbon fiber 75 watt the hids nice so the, the grill's got loose fasteners Okay. And this whole grill just comes off with four fasteners. Nice. So I'm able to pull this on and off without taking my hood off. Dang. And it keeps it keeps my lights still on the truck. Nice. So. Well, right on, man. So so that's that's pretty good on the front end. You're running 39s. Yeah, 39 BFG projects. Dude, uh, I love the skid plate though. Yeah, that was also done by Wide Open. That skid plate's rad, man. Yeah, it's clean. Super clean. And that's still the same look as it had when it had arms too, right? Yeah. So I was trying to keep the same look. Um, I really like the way they did the skid plate on this truck. I was trying real hard to keep it, so the only thing I did was had to shorten it. Mm -hmm. And all I did was cut the skid plates about four or five inches shorter and then just bolted right back up. Tell us about the, the rear suspension and the rear cage setup and all that, all that good stuff, man. This is really clean. Um, and this, is the, this has been the same for quite a while, right? Yeah, so the only thing that's changed since I 
originally built this is I just changed the rear coil overs. I upgraded to from a 2.5 to a 3.0. Uh, so that was part of my whole package. I, I bought a cane. All the tube work here was done in my garage when I lived in LA. And uh, I had a buddy help me out come and center the, the housing to the truck. Mm -hmm. And we built the links off of that. So these are these are the OG original Psychotic Tundra links. Oh, that Roy ODR made. That Roy made, yes. Nice, man. Roy. So, so for those of you guys that don't know Roy, he is um he's the I beam master, pretty much. Yeah. Right. Cool. He he kills it. I know him and Harriman and Eric Moore's Metalworks are I beam dudes that that slay. But I know uh, Roy is famous for the Psychotic Tundra, which is what you guys were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. It was... uh, cut to some footage of the Psychotic Tundra because yeah. that thing is wild. No, Evan. We won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> killer job on everything he's ever done is awesome so hell yeah man yeah Jono gave me a ride in that that tundra one time and i you know i got out my legs are shaking i'm like yeah. kind of ruined kind of ruined everything you're like, I was like yeah, do this. Beams, beams are the way beams are the way so i've been kind of <laughs> wanting to do beams ever since then and you know finally been able to do it so i'm glad anything special about those swayaways were they actually on the psychotic truck yeah so these these are my royalways is what i call them okay um so these were on the truck when it won the trophy truck class. Uh, Insane. His 1400 truck with his steel cab, you know. So Roy actually took a king piston, machined it to fit inside of the body. And so these are king shocks, but they're red. And they say sway away. What? 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 So what, what fuel cell size you run in? Or? So I run a, uh, I run a Jazz. <laughs> Uh, 32 gallon tank underneath the back here. Okay. And this whole back half, if you if you look at it, all of my tires are kicked sideways. Was there any purpose to do that, or was it just kind of like an aesthetic kind of? Yeah. So uh, when we when we laid it all out, the frame was actually sitting on a four x four when we built this whole back half. We were putting the tires on the ground and we we're kind of like figuring out where they needed to go. I wanted stand ups. I wasn't a big fan of the lay downs. Um, and then the stack in it, I wanted the fuel tank in the back for the extra weight, so I didn't want to put all that up front. So the only way to do it was to do stand-ups on either side. So if I wanted, if I did it straight here, I would have to push the tire back out to here, because mm. the 39s are so big, mm. to just clear the, the, the tire. I love the back of this thing. Yeah, Super I've always, unique. I've always, I've always thought it was, it was really unique. And then uh, rear end. Uh, so we're running a, a camber, three and a half inch housing, full okay. quarter. It's a 40 spline axle. With two and a half inch hubs on each side. My buddy Alec, he did my, he does my uh, all my third members. Okay. So we put a uh, we put a ten inch in it just recently. Try to get that extra strength out of the ten inch. I'll throw this at you. My brakes are back here. What the heck? That's crazy. So that's a. I don't think I've ever seen that before. How come? So going back to the front, I run two power steering pumps. So one of the power steering pumps runs the Hydro Boost, and it's a stock Chevy Hydro Boost. I'm able to. Put, put the brakes anywhere I want with a with a kit that I bought online. With all the shocks, the big 4.0s, the 3.0s up front, I had no room for the Hydro Boost, that whole kit, so I had to move it somewhere else. So I put it in the back here, and I run a single brake line to, to power it, and that's it. So it kind of like ended up being a space saver, yeah, it was in a, a sense, saver, right? For, for sure, and then uh, I'm, I'm able to keep power brakes, which I was not really a fan of the manual brakes so much. Okay, right on. Right on. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of weight to stop. It's a lot of weight to stop. I mean, this thing weighs well over six. Well, and plus, pounds. and plus, putting well, it back, putting it back there, like it's nice and open, so it's like easy to work around. Like yeah. if there's if something's leaking there, like you could you could see it like immediately, mm -hmm. you know. So that's actually yeah. that's a really good idea. Well, it gets it gets the power steering fluid, which is really flammable, yeah. away from my headers, yeah, yeah, away yeah, yeah, from yeah. all the yeah. engine stuff. So tell us about the inside, man. So the inside was done way back. The cage work was probably done in I think 2012. Oh, okay. So this was two years after I just bought the truck. I had a, uh, a buddy that lived in Fullerton that did the cage work. So this is the only part of the truck besides this and the front that I didn't do personally myself. Fiberworks dash, full-size truck dash. Run my little Lawrence here for my personal, just what I can see from the driver's seat. Right. And the passenger's got a full adjusted, adjustable handle. Everything see. will slide all the way out. Very um, nice. With the iPad, I mean. 
And you got the you got the oh the oh shit handles. <laughs> you know, just reminiscent on the days of the A arms there too. Right there it is. <laughs> nice, dude. That's cool, man. I know it's super roomy back here. You know. Yeah, the third seat's a little tight. I mean, it's a good setup. Yeah, someone. It's a great setup. Someone about my size is a little tight back there, but you get someone about five foot four, five foot. Yeah, five, but you're yeah. also like six foot eight. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's a perfect Garcia backseat. Yeah, we're running rugged system here, Switch Pros. I can control everything from my phone. The entire truck is ran off of the Switch Pros from the from the ignition to the to the fans, headlights, everything. I mean, I even got blinkers in the truck. What's the next steps of this thing? I really need to clean up some wiring, um, and then I needed to probably build a new engine. I mean, oh, you want to build a new motor? Yeah. With the uh, with the new suspension, this truck is capable of way more than that motor is able to throw at it. That's a slippery slope, my friend. <laughs> okay, let me tell you, that is a slippery slope. Yeah. So tell them, guys. Slippery. Tell them in the comments, okay? <laughs> if it works, just just go, man. Just enjoy just, it. Yeah, just at least. And then, but but you're least, just like, no, no, no. Well, I need to. I really need to do the the whole fuel injection. Is what I really need to do. Right, right. I need to get away from the whole carburetor, even though it works great, and I have. I, had almost zero issues with it. Mm. The fuel injection is just the way to go. Right, so. right. Brad, who did your paint job? Oh, oh, so this whole truck, this whole truck is actually spray painted. I went into uh, I went into AutoZone and I, I asked for the color match to the stock Chevy color, and I spray painted the entire thing with about 12 cans. We made it, we made a makeshift booth inside my cousin's garage. That's crazy. That's awesome. And well, we, dude, it actually looks, yeah, it looks spot really good. on. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it's, even, of, it's even pretty glossy. Uh, did you put it? Did you put a top coat on it? Yeah, so I put a clear on it, and then uh, then I, I, I buffed it and waxed it and everything too. So. And you got the racing stripes from Barstow. Yeah. The bushes. You could you could tell I use and abuse this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it's for, whole, bro. That's what it's for. The whole rock chips and the paint, everything. So. Well, for sure, that was a, a nice little fun fact. Cool. All right, guys, hope you guys liked this episode. It was awesome catching up with Brad. You guys will definitely see this dude at our booth. You'll see him at events, and we can't wait to get this thing in action in Barstow. Now we want to see it go through the big whoops. We'll get some good shots for you guys. Take care, guys. Yo, what happened? Oh, uh, you know, I was just talking about power steering fluid being really flammable. Yeah. Well, we needed the fire extinguisher. Uh-oh. A little bit of power steering fluid leak and uh, headers right on the headers. Oh, dang it. So luckily, you, know, you got it quick though. We always keep it on hand.